You know, there are certain books that I think you can come back to at any point in your life and the ideas in them will be relevant. One of those books for me has been Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius was a Roman emperor and a Stoic philosopher. The school of Stoic philosophy has a few trademark tenets as I understand it. Not worrying about things that you can't control, living with virtue, controlling your emotional reaction to and perception of circumstances and events. I think sometimes we see philosophy as being very abstract and overly intellectual, but philosophy can actually teach us a lot about life and, and ways to live to get the most out of our lives and meditations is a great example of that it consists of 12 books each of which contains Aurelius's reflections on different topics all taken from his personal journals it would be difficult for me to try to relay all of the information in this book to you in, in a short video but what I want to do today is to share some of the important lessons that I've taken away from meditations I've divided the lessons into five different category so we're going to look at Marcus Aurelius's thoughts on work, time, the mind and what we can and can't control, relationships as well as material possessions. So grab your tea, coffee, whatever drink it is you like and let's get right into the video. An important principle in Stoic philosophy is that while you can't control what exactly happens to you, you can control how you react to it and how you allow it to affect you. Everything comes down to our perception of what is happening around us. Aurelia says in book 12 that all is as thinking makes it so, and you control your thinking. So remove your judgments whenever you wish and then there is calm. When we come up against a roadblock, a challenge, something bad or tragic happens to us, it's normal to react with certain feelings of despair, of hopelessness and frustration. I think even when we experience things that can be considered minor inconveniences, we tend to have these very visceral reactions. Somebody cuts you off in traffic and your entire day is ruined and you're running around telling everybody about it. Your plane is delayed and you're ready to curse the gate agent out. You're not thinking about the fact that the few hours that they have to wait to fix the issue with the plane or to let the bad weather pass are actually for your benefit. You're just focusing on the fact that you're not getting to your destination at the time that you had planned. A lot of that I think happens when we allow our ego and our sense of self-importance to get in the way and Marcus Aurelius had what I believe is a better way of going about dealing with these situations. You have to ask yourself how is your reaction in that moment helping the situation if it's helping at all? Is it going to change the situation? Is it going to make it better? And more often than not the answer to those questions is no. Aurelia says, when circumstances force you to some sort of distress, quickly return to yourself. Do not stay out of rhythm for longer than you must. Now I know that this can be a lot easier said than done, especially when we think about those things that are very difficult to deal with, like losing a job or losing a family member. But as Aurelia says, you will master the harmony more by coming back to it. It's all about taking things in stride, accepting that there will be inevitable outcomes in life, and redirecting your energy to the things that you actually can control. Marcus Aurelius believed that we are born for the sake of each other. We are all human, we exist in this world, and we owe it to ourselves to show each other some compassion, some decency, some kindness. But sometimes we fail to do that and we lack the ability to step into another person's shoes. At the first sign of disagreement, of conflict, we recoil because we're hurt and we're offended, we're angry. All we can think is that this person is against us. We don't want to listen to anything that they have to say because we believe that what we have to say is far more important. But Aurelia says, accustom yourself not to be disregarding of what someone else has to say. As far as possible, enter into the mind of the speaker. Now again, this is the real world and even if we were born for the sake of each other, there will always be people who are simply ill-intentioned and are not willing to change their perspective on anything. I'm sure you can relate to the fact that in this world that we live in today, it's very difficult to have a conversation or a discussion with somebody regarding maybe political issues or social issues without them feeling offended or without having personal attacks thrown at you. I think in book two, Aurelius gives a great guide on how to deal with these kinds of interactions. He says, say to yourself first thing in the morning, today I shall meet people who are meddling, ungrateful, aggressive, treacherous, 
malicious on social, all this has afflicted them through their ignorance of true good and evil. But I have seen that the nature of good is what is right, and the nature of evil what is wrong. And I have reflected that the nature of the offender himself is akin to my own. Therefore, I cannot be harmed by any of them, as none will infect me with their wrong. Now, what about those instances where we get so caught up and obsessed with what other people think of us, you know, how we're perceived? This person doesn't like me, this person doesn't think highly of me. And I think that is completely normal to a certain point, but not to the extent where you are compromising who you are in order to fit into different circles and to be seen and perceived by people in a certain way. Aurelius says in Book 9, when another blames you or hates you or people voice similar criticisms, go to their souls, penetrate inside and see what sort of people they are. You will realize that there is no need to be racked with anxiety that they should hold any particular opinion about you. I think when you have a good understanding of yourself and you truly know who you are and you know that your intentions are good, it becomes a lot harder for people to have that sort of control and that kind of power over you to call offense or to change your mood at the drop of a hat. And the second thing you'll probably start to notice is that people's opinions will become less and less important to you because you know who you truly are and it's going to be very difficult difficult for anyone to compromise that. I think the best way to begin this section is just by reading a quote. At the break of day when you're reluctant to get up, have this thought ready to mind. I am getting up for a man's work. Do I still then resent it if I'm going out to do what I was born for, the purpose for which I was brought into the world? Or was I created to wrap myself in blankets and keep warm? Now I felt called out when I first read this quote and I know a lot of you can probably relate. You either have a job that you don't like and so you dread going into work every day or even when you do have a job that you enjoy or you have found what you think your purpose is, you have this false sense of security and that at some point becomes complacency. We say to ourselves, oh, it's Monday again, I don't want to do this, I just need a few more hours of sleep, and we fall into this very selfish thinking pattern. I know for me, sometimes I will know that I've had enough rest, I've, I know that I've had enough relaxation, but I want more of it just for the sake of my own comfort. I think what's helpful when you fall into thinking patterns like this is to ask yourself, if I have determined that this is the purpose for my life, if I've determined that this is what I want to do and I only have one life to do it, then why don't I just do it to the best of my ability? You know, what, what's all this complaining about and how is this complaining going to help me? We're human, we're going to have certain emotional reactions to the routines of everyday life. Rest is important, relaxation is important, but I think the point here is that you should never let your desire for comfort become a selfish one and one that draws you away from doing the things that you've determined will make you fulfilled in life. Whether that's driving a delivery truck or doing surgery on patients or teaching young children. Whatever it is, it's important and you're doing it for a reason. Sometimes I think it can be really helpful to simply reframe your thinking and change your language. Instead of saying, I have to get up, I have to go to work, tell yourself that you get to do these things. You have the opportunity to do them and that's certainly a privilege, one that not many people get to enjoy. In this consumerist society that we live in, it's always about the next best thing, the next acquisition. We want the latest and best technology and the fancy houses, the trendiest clothing. And what happens sometimes is we get these things, we enjoy them for a time, but then a newer version comes out or we see a friend or a neighbor with a better version and we want that. And so now we're living in this constant state of want. Now, I am by no means saying that material things and possessions and money can't make us happy because they can and they do. But Aurelius says in book 7, do not dream of possession of what you do not have. Rather, reflect on the greatest blessings in what you do have and on their account, remind yourself how much they would have been missed if they were not here. So I think the major takeaway here is that we need to remember to be grateful for what we have and to constantly remind ourselves, as Aurelius said, that there was a point where we didn't have these things and we wanted them. And it's important for us to try to strike a balance between being grateful and not allowing ourselves to become too dependent or too attached to our possessions. And when you're able to detach from those material possessions, you'll find that there's really not that much in life that you need in order to be happy. And that also allows you to remain humble no matter how many achievements you have, how many titles you have to your name, how much money you earn.
The final concept we're going to talk about today is time and the first lesson there is we don't have all the time in the world. You know, we go about our daily lives and our obligations and we take time for granted. We put things off, you know, when you say, oh, I'm going to call my parents tomorrow, I'm going to go see my friends next week or I'm going to visit my grandparents next month. We do so with a certain level of arrogance, right? Because what makes you so entitled to think that tomorrow is yours for the taking? And I'm not saying that to be morbid in any way. It's just that everything changes, everything goes away at some point, nothing is permanent, right? And what you'll realize when you can accept that fact with humility is that there's very little that warrants all the worrying or the overthinking that you do. It reminds me of something that my mom often says, which is that very few things in life are critical. I'm not saying that you should never take anything in life seriously, that you shouldn't care about anything that happens to you in life. It's simply that you shouldn't become attached to outcomes because in the end, everything goes away. As Aurelius says, all is ephemeral, both memory and the object of memory. Another reflection that Aurelius had about time is that everything happens in due time. Aurelius says in book four, universe, your harmony is my harmony. Nothing in your good time is too early or too late for me. Now, this is something that I am continuing to learn and to come to terms with, this idea that we all have to live our lives with a certain level of acceptance. And you can't force something to happen or force something to be true because when you try to do that, you're doing so with desperate energy and I'm sure that no one wants to live with that kind of energy. It shows that you're not willing to wait, you're not willing to be patient for the things that you want out of life and that you're not content. The way I like to think about it is if I had everything that I wanted in this exact moment, what else would there be for me to live for? What would there be for me to look forward to and to work towards? It annoys me too sometimes when people say everything happens for a reason and you know when it's your time it's gonna happen. I know what that's like having to wait on the things that you think you deserve and even having them in your grasp but then losing them either because the time wasn't right or circumstances weren't in your favor. But I like to think that when you get to the place where you're supposed to be, when you meet the people that you're supposed to meet, you'll understand why you had to wait and you'll see why it was worth it. To add to that, Aurelius says, love only what falls your way and is fated for you. What could suit you more than that? When we look in on other people's lives and see what they have going on for them, it's easy for us to think, oh, I wish I had that and it seems so easy for them and, and why isn't it coming as easily for me? But when you do that, you're devaluing the uniqueness of your own path and you're detracting from what you have. I'm learning that sometimes there is only so much that you can do. You can do the work, you can put the effort in, but you also have to let life play out the way it will. And again, when you allow yourself to focus on only the things that you can control, you help yourself to manage expectations. And as a result, you can be more realistic and more at peace with where you are in life. So those are some of the main lessons from meditations that I wanted to share with you. Now, I'm not trying to force stoicism on anybody and I appreciate that there may be things in this book that you don't agree with, but in general, I do think that there are quite a few lessons in here that are applicable to anyone. I highly recommend this book, especially if you're new to philosophical thought. Like I mentioned, these reflections were effectively Aurelius's journals, so the writing is a lot more personal and feels a bit more familiar and I think that makes the information easier to absorb. So if you do decide to check this book out, I'll have it linked in the description below. If you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, and maybe check out the video that I did on 26 life lessons that I've learned so far, because a lot of those lessons were inspired by stoic thinking. Take good care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.